Welcome to Control and Coordination, Chapter 5. I'm your host, Mr. Ruby. As we look at this chapter about control and coordination, our focus is going to be the nervous system. The nervous system. How the nervous system works. After doing the dishes and finishing your homework, you settle down in your favorite chair and pick up that mystery novel you've been trying to finish. Only three pages to go. Who did it? Why did she do it? Crash! You hear a scream. What made that unearthly noise? You turn around to find that your dog's wagging tail has just swept the lamp off the table. Suddenly you're aware that your heart is racing and your hands are shaking. After a few minutes, though, your breathing returns to normal and your heart rate is back to regular rate. What's going on? Responding to stimuli. The scene described above is an example of how your body responds to changes in its environment. Any external or internal change that brings about a response is called a stimulus. Each day, you are bombarded by thousands of stimuli, as shown in Figure 1. Noise, light, smell of food, and temperature of the air are all stimuli from outside your body. Chemical substances, such as hormones, are examples of stimuli from inside your body. Your body adjusts to changes of stimuli with the help of your nervous system. Figure 1. Stimuli are found everywhere and all the time, even when you're enjoying being with your friends. What type of stimuli are presented at this party? Well, if you look closely, you'll see light, light from a television, perhaps sound from a guitar being played, definitely the smell of food as pizza is being shared, and temperature. It's a warm day. Maybe the window's open. Figure 2, a neuron. A neuron is made up of a cell body, dendrites, and axons. How does the branching of dendrites allow for more impulse of the neuron to be picked up? Let us find out in our, as we continue reading. Homeostasis. It's amazing how your body handles all these stimuli. Control systems maintain steady internal conditions. The regulation of steady life mating conditions inside our organism, despite changes in the environment, is called homeostasis. Examples of homeostasis are the regulation of your breathing, heartbeat, and digestion. Your nervous system is one of several control systems used by your body to maintain homeostasis. Back to cells, our old friends made of organelles. Nerve cells. The basic functioning unit of the nervous system are nerve cells, or neurons, as shown in Figure 2. A neuron is made up of a cell body and branches called dendrites and axons. Dendrites receive messages from other neurons and send them to the cell body. Axons carry messages away from the cell body. Any message carried by a neuron is called an impulse. Notice the branching at the end of the axon. This allows the impulses to move to many other muscles, neurons, or glands. Let's look at this figure again. The cell body, the dendrites, the nucleus, the axons, the direction of the impulse. Types of nerve cells and respond to stimuli, such as the changes in temperature, sound, pressure, and taste. Three types of neurons, sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons, transport impulses. Sensory neurons receive information and send impulses to the brain or spinal cord, where interneurons rely on these impulses to motor neurons. Motor neurons then conduct the impulses from your brain or spinal cord to muscles or glands throughout your body.
visualizing nerve impulse pathways, figure three, by National Geographic, no less. Millions of nerve impulses are moving throughout your body as you read this page. In response to stimuli, many impulses follow specific pathways. from sensory neuron to interneuron to motor neuron to bring about a response. Like a relay team, these three types of neurons work together. The illustration on this page shows how the sound of a breaking window might startle you as you cause you to drop a glass of water. Sensory neurons. When you hear a loud noise, receptors in your ears, the specialized endings of sensory neurons are stimulated. These sensory neurons produce nerve impulses that travel to your brain. Interneurons. Interneurons in your brain receive impulses from sensory neurons and pass them along to motor neurons. Motor neuron impulses travel down the axons of motor neurons to muscles, in this case your biceps, which contract and jerk your arm in response to the loud noise. The noise, a baseball coming through a window. The arms react, dropping the glass of beverage into neurons to motor neurons. Sensory neurons, the hearing, into neurons in the brain to the muscle. Synapses. In a relay race, the first runner sprints down the track with a baton in his or her hand. As the next runner rounds the track, he or she hands the baton off to the next runner. The two runners never physically touch each other. The transfer of baton signal and the second runner continues the race. As shown in figure three, your nervous system away. Like the runners in a relay race, neurons don't touch each other. How does an impulse move from one neuron to another? To move from one neuron to the next, an impulse crosses a small space called a synapse. In figure four, note when an impulse reaches the end of an axon, the axon releases a chemical. This chemical flows across the synapse and stimulates the impulse in the dendrite of the next neuron. An impulse moves from neuron to neuron, just like a baton moves from runner to runner in a relay race. The baton represents the chemical at the synapse. And here is figure four showing the synapse, the tiny space where dendrite meets axon, axon meets dendrite. The central nervous system, figure five, right here, with the brain, the spinal cord, and the spinal nerves. This is the central nervous system. Figure five shows how organs of the nervous system are grouped into two major divisions the central nervous system, the CNS, and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is made up of all the nerves outside the CNS. These include the nerves in your head, called the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, which are the nerves that come from your spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system connects the brain and the spinal cord and other body parts. Your neurons are adapted in such a way that impulses move in only one direction. Sensory neurons send impulses to the brain. Here we have an image of the brain itself in figure six. The brain. The brain coordinates all of your body's activities. If someone tickles your feet, while why does your brain whole body seem to react? The brain is made up of approximately a hundred billion neurons which is nearly 10% of all the neurons in the human body. Surrounding the protecting of the brain are the bony skull, three membranes, and a layer of fluid, as shown in figure six. The brain is divided into three major parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The cerebrum. Thinking takes, pla think takes place in the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. 
This is where the impulses from the senses are interpreted, memory is stored, and movements are controlled. The outer layer of the cerebrum, called the cortex, is marked by many ridges and grooves. These structures increase the surface area of the cortex, allowing more complex thoughts to be processed. Figure 6 shows some of the motor and sensory tasks that the cortex controls. Let's look back up here. Motor and sensory task. Sensory areas in the cerebrum, motor area, speech and taste, intellect and learning here in the prefrontal cortex, hearing over here in the cerebellum. We have general inter interpretation area, balance area, and then the brain stem. Reading check. What major activities take place in the cerebrum? The major activities in the, the cerebrum. This is where impulses from the senses interpret memory is stored and movements are controlled in the cerebrum. Now let's talk about the cerebellum. The cerebellum. Stimuli from the eyes and ears and from muscles and tendons, which are the tissue that connect muscles to bones, are interpreted in the cerebellum. With this information, the cerebellum is able to coordinate voluntary muscle movements, maintain muscle tone, and help maintain balance. A complex activity, such as a riding a bike, requires a lot of coordination and control of your muscles. The cerebellum coordinates your muscle movements so that they maintain your balance. Cerebellum. The brain stem. At the base of the brain is the brain stem. It extends from the cerebellum and connects the brain to the spinal cord. The brain stem is made up of the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. The midbrain and pons act parts of the brain with each other. The medulla controls involuntary actions such as heartbeat, breathing, and blood pressure. The medulla is also involved in such actions as coughing, sneezing, swallowing, and vomiting. Blech. The spinal cord. Your spinal cord, illustrated in figure 7, is an extension of the brain stem. It is made up of bundles of neurons that carry impulses from all parts of the body to the brain and from the brain to all parts of your body. The adult spinal cord is about the width of an adult thumb and is about 43 centimeters long. The peripheral nervous system. Your brain and spinal cord are connected to the rest of your body through the peripheral nervous system. The peri nervous system is made up of 12 pairs of nerves from your brain called the cranial nerves and 31 pairs from your spinal cord called the spinal nerves. Spinal nerves are made up of bundles of sensory and motor neurons bound together by connective tissue. For this reason, a single spinal nerve can have impulses going to and from the brain at the same time. Some nerves contain only one sensory neuron, and some contain only motor neurons, but no nerves contain both types of neurons. Somatic and Autonomic Systems The peripheral nervous system has two major divisions. The somatic system controls voluntary actions, it is made up of the cranial and spinal nerves that go from the central nervous system to your skeletal muscles. The autonomic, autonomic system controls involuntary actions, those not under conscious control, such as your heart rate, breathing, digestion, and glandular function. These two divisions, along with the central nervous system, make up your body's nervous system. Figure A shows a column vertebrae, bones that protect the spinal cord, Figure B, the spinal cord is made up of bundles of neurons that carry impulses to and from all parts of the body, similar to telephone cable. You know, back when phones used to have landlines. So here we go. Inside we have the blood vessels, nerve fibers, axons, receptors, bundle fibers, spinal cord, the protective covering, the spinal disc, and the vertebrae. Safety and the nervous system. Every mental process and physical action of the body is associated with structures of the central and peripheral nervous system. 
Therefore, any injury to the brain or spinal cord can be serious. A severe blow to the head can bruise the brain and cause temporary or permanent loss of mental and physical abilities. For example, the back of the brain control vision. An injury to this region could result in the loss of vision. Although the spinal cord is surrounded by the bones in your spine called vertebrae, spinal cord injuries do occur. They can be just as dangerous as brain injury. Injury to the spine can bring about damage to the nerve pathways and result in paralysis, which is the loss of muscle movement. As shown in figure eight, a neck injury that damages certain nerves could prevent a person from breathing. Major causes of head injuries and spinal injuries include automobile, motorcycle, and bicycle accidents, as well as sports injuries. Just like wearing seat belts in automobiles, it's important to wear the appropriate safety gear while playing sports and riding on bicycles and skateboards. Brain and Spinal Cord Figure 8 Figure 9 Response to Reflexes Interneurons, Sensor Neurons, Spinal Cord your response to a reflex is controlled by your spinal cord, not your brain. Reflexes. You experience a reflex if you accidentally touch something sharp, something extremely hot or cold, or when you cough or vomit. A reflex is an involuntary, auto automatic response to a stimulus. You can control reflexes because they occur before you know what has happened. A reflex involves a simple nerve pathway called a reflex ach, as illustrated in figure 9. Someone's taking something hot right out of the microwave. You notice that how sometimes a bowl will get really hot and the food stays not hot at all. While you're walking on a sandy beach, a pain suddenly shoots through your foot as you step on the sharp edge of a broken shell. Sensory receptors in your foot respond to the sharp object and an impulse is sent to the spinal cord. As you just learned, the impulse passes an interneuron in the spinal cord and immediately relays the impulse to your motor neurons. The motor neurons transmits the impulse to the muscles on your legs. Instantly, without thinking, you lift up your leg in response to the sharp edge shell. This is a withdrawal reflex. A reflex allows the body to respond without having to think about what action to take. Reflex responses are controlled in your spinal cord, not in your brain. Your brain acts after the reflex helps you figure out what to do to make the pain stop. Reading check. Why are reflexes important? Let's think about that for a moment. Why would a reflex be important? Could it be you want to limit the amount of injury that's happening when there is danger to your body? Do you remember reading at the beginning of this chapter about a frightened, being frightened after a lamp was broken? What could have happened if your breathing and heart rate didn't calm down within a few minutes? Your body systems can't be kept in a state of continual excitement. The organs of your nervous system controls the coordinating body responses. This helps maintain homeostasis within your body. And wrapping up this section, how drugs affect the nervous system. Many drugs such as alcohol and caffeine directly affect your nervous system. Once swallowed, alcohol directly passes into the walls of the stomach and small intestine into the circulatory system. And we just talked about the digestive system and how the small intestine is where nutrients are absorbed into the blood. After it is inside your circulatory system, it can travel throughout your body. Upon reaching neurons, alcohol moves through their cell membranes and disrupts their normal cell function. As a result, this drug slows the activities of the central nervous system and is classified as a depressant. Muscle control, judgment, and reasoning and memory and concentration are all impaired. Heavy alcohol use destroys brain and liver cells. A stimulant is a drug that speeds up activity in the central nervous system. Caffeine is a stimulant found in coffee, tea, cocoa, and many soft drinks, as shown in figure 10. 
where they're enjoying a soft drink that looks suspiciously like Coca-Cola, along with pizza. Too much caffeine can increase your heart rate and aggravates restlessness, tremors, and insomnia in some people, and also can stimulate the kidneys to produce more urine. Think again about a scare from a loud noise. The organs of your nervous system control and coordinate responses to maintain homeostasis. Again, an important word for you to understand, homeostasis, within your body. This task might be more difficult when your body must cope with the effects of drugs. A section assessment. Question one, draw and label the parts of the neuron. Section two. Part 2. Compare the central and peripheral nervous system. That's simple enough. The central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral is all the nerves outside there. 3. During cold weather, winter evening, you have several cups of hot cocoa. Explain why you might have trouble falling asleep. That relates back to just this right here, this section, where it talks about caffeine as a stimulant. Finally, coffee, tea, and right here in cocoa so you can surmise why or infer why you might have a high trying falling asleep after taking a stimulant number four explain the advantage of having reflexes controlled by the spinal cord your explanation could include something about the speed of reaction in five thinking critically explain why many medications cause consumers not to operate heavy machinery so what type of medication could it be that you would not want to hop in right? heavy machinery? Could it be classified as up here, classified as a depressant? Perhaps that's your answer. We'll not be covering number six, the concept map, or number seven, the word processing. Thank you for joining me on the nervous system. And this has been section one about the nervous system. And running down the vocabulary, homostasis, neuron, dendrite, axon, synapse, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, cerebrum, cerebellum, brain stem, and reflex. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this. And we'll see you on YouTube. Mr. Rubia.